It's going to be one of those days. You can already tell. You already know. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gamma Trap, one word. And today we're going to be going over five things you can start doing today to increase the speed of your artwork without sacrificing quality, of course. Let's get started. So tip number one, references. Drawing from imagination is cool and all, uh, but only prodigies and geniuses can pull it off 100% of the time while still making all of it look good. The rest of us humble mortals shouldn't feel bad about using our real eyes to guide our hands once instead of having to use our mind's eye trying to guide our hands 30 times only for the horse to come out looking like a pig donkey homunculus and then you have to find a reference anyway and then you gotta explain to everybody why it took you so long to try and remember how to draw a horse even though you haven't ever drawn horses. That got a bit personal. Uh, point I'm trying to make is almost everyone who wants to create high quality artwork either finds references or creates their own to save time and have the end result looking amazing. Here's how I go about handling my references. If I want to make a colorful fantasy piece or a spooky scary piece, whichever, first I go to ArtStation or Pinterest and type in keywords that I think about when considering that piece. I look for interesting compositions or creative color palettes, or if I'm looking for something specific, I'll find several different pictures of that thing or those things so that I can have them up next to me while I'm working so I can make sure I got the nose right or the armor correctly. And if you're still on the fence about references, here's why it's actually good for you. Human memory is flawed, but every brushstroke is practice. Meaning, if you try for hours to draw a horse from memory, I'm just gonna keep coming back to that horse. It haunts me. And what you're drawing does not look like a horse. You are not practicing how to draw a horse. You are practicing how not to draw a horse. You're instilling bad habits and false information into your art, and it's going to make mastering how to draw anything take way longer. I have a second monitor that I keep all my reference material on to look at while I work, uh, but you can use a Photoshop tab or even your phone. I mean, this will do. I mean, if you do, use what you got. References are for everybody. Tip number two, environment. When I say environment, I don't mean like paint the environment first, even though I'm, sometimes that can help. But I mean your environment. Everything around you that can affect the flow of your work needs to be figured out and sorted to make sure that you have the most efficient use of your time. The time of day when you work, the people that you work around, your pets, your kids, the people in your house, your coworkers, your own bodily functions, everything has to be taken into account. I don't know about you, but when I get distracted, it takes me forever to get back into the flow. So I try to make sure there's as few things around me as possible that can do that so I can get some solid work done for hours at a time. Some artists, myself included, find it best to work at night because there's less distractions. I take my dogs out before I get to work so I know that I've got a solid four to five hours before I have to worry about them making a mess. I eat a good meal an hour before I get to work so I know I've got enough time for anything my body wants to take up with me. We can get it handled before uh, I get started. And when everything is taken care of, I sit down, I put on a good audiobook, and I work for a solid four to five hours before taking a break. Working continuously is the best possible way to maintain an efficient flow. Some call it being in the zone, whatever you call it, try to maintain that for as long as possible. Tip number three, thumbnails. Not, not, not these, the it's a, it's a term, and let me, let me explain. A thumbnail is a form of rough draft. It's a way we can preview the overall composition and balance of a piece with very little detail. To do this, just whip up some scribbles of what you had in mind and zoom out from the piece so it's very small. We want these very small so that we can see everything that's going on in the piece at, just at a glance and get a real good idea of the, of the balance of the thing. And it's, in fact, it's best if you do this a couple times and just, you know, Pick your favorite. These are just meant to be fast, low detail shapes and scribbles so that you can just get a good idea on the composition of the piece uh, and sort of make a roadmap for yourself so you're not wandering around the canvas aimlessly. For traditional artists, I would suggest working lightly on the canvas and putting it at one end of the room and looking at it from the other because you can't, you can't really zoom out. You've got the, the old fashioned zoom, you know, with the eyes and your feet just walking get to it. <laughs> it's, 
It might really seem like I don't like traditional arts. I do. I love them. I'm just jealous. <laughs> I can't do it. Pixels, they're, they're the only things that have managed to speak to me my whole life. My family was so proud. Moving along to tip number four. Think big. Oftentimes when I'm watching a newer artist work, I'll see them gently hatching in the line work or doing a lot of detail on the face and then moving on to another body part like the torso or the hands and just focus on pretty much one piece at a time. From someone who's been doing this for a long time, I gotta tell you guys, y'all are skipping a lot of steps. When you start working from your thumbnail or rough draft, yeah, it's fine to put some detail in a little, barely, uh, but don't let yourself spend any amount of time on that yet. You're going to want to start with your brush as big as you can make it. Get your shapes and values in first and make sure they all fit together. When you start your pieces and immediately just jump into details, you could spend 20 hours on that piece. And 17 of those hours are probably spent correcting mistakes. Starting big and very slowly making your brush smaller and smaller will reduce the amount of mistakes you make and can turn that 20 hour piece into a four hour piece and it would probably make it look better. Next time you're watching Bob Ross, try and see what uh, what brush he picks up first. Now, I know I'm gonna get a little flack for this, but I think more people need to hear it. Know your material. I know all artists hate it when the answer to their problem is practice. So before you click off or blast me in the comments, so let, me, let me get into this a little bit. I see this a lot when someone thinks real hard about improving their artwork and they put some good time into it and they improve a bit. But then they start kind of looking for what I like to call the just do it button. Where they aren't seeing the improvements they were looking for as fast as they were hoping for. And so they think they're doing something wrong. So they'll look around for tutorials hoping that someone will tell them how to just do it. I'm personally not as skilled as I would like to be in some aspects of my work. So I'm looking around constantly for excuses to practice those things. Because I mean, like, I know you're never too good to practice. That's, that's honestly true. Think about anything, sports, chess. I mean, I've, some people consider chess a sport, I guess. Remember that horse? When I was working on it, I knew it didn't look good. So I stopped what I was doing real quick, just, just for a bit and drew some quick horses up on the side with a reference and it turned out looking much more like a horse. In fact, now I'm actually finding excuses to just draw horses for pieces because I know I'm, I'm weak in that aspect and I want to improve. And now, because I put so much time into it, not as much as I would like, remember, I'm still practicing, but if I have a piece with a horse in it, I can draw that horse inside that piece in almost no time at all, thus saving time. See what I'm saying? It's all... It's all coming together. It's all upstairs. I'm seeing it now. Practice. What a concept. Who knew? There's no just do it button? I can just practice a lot on something or a lot of things and I'll get better at it? I keep hearing that. People keep saying that. I keep saying practice, that practice word. So there you are, guys. Five tips to improving the speed and efficiency of your artwork. I hope you found this useful, helpful, maybe entertaining. And if you did, I'd appreciate if you leave a like and comment below which one of these aspects you think was the most helpful or the least helpful. I want to know either. Give me, give me both. If you'd like to watch me work live, you can do so on Twitch at Gamma Trap. Link will be below. I also play games there. Fun fact. But you can also subscribe here for more tips, tutorials, tricks, and speed paints. I do a lot more tutorials and I've got a whole lot more lined up, so feel free to hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned. You can hit the notification bell if you want to. It's no biggie. It's kind of a big deal. I'm just, don't, don't mind me, I'm just smiling because I'm thinking of all the people that are gonna ring that bell. Oh, what a feeling. It's, it's magical. They practiced a lot on that bell. I can, I can tell they practiced a lot on that bell that they put some serious mileage, some serious hours into making sure that bell was so good, so pristine, high class, top of the line. Good work, good work YouTube, good work YouTube. I don't say that often enough. Good job YouTube, that bell looks good. It even looks better when it's rung. I mean, I, I don't wanna spoil anything, 
but it does. Just saying.